I would like to welcome everyone to our Elmore County work session, commission work session, Monday, May 8, 2017, beginning at 5 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting to order. We'll begin with our regular business, a review of the minutes of the April 27, 2017 commission meetings. Are there any comments or corrections that need to be made? All right, we'll proceed with the review of the memorandum of warrants for the period of April 20, 2017 through May 3rd, 2017. Uh, Ms. McDuffie? Yes, Chairman. The memorandum of warrants for the period stated um, was $982,106. Thank you. Any comments or questions from any commissioners? Okay, we'll proceed with the old business. Uh, we are still... Um, in the midst of discussing the Mid-South RCND board appointment, um, I've contacted them regarding any recommendations or qualifications for that appointment, and I'm still waiting, so we will continue to move that forward to a future meeting. Proceeding forward with new business, we'd like to invite uh, Mr. Jimmy K. Lanier uh, to come to the podium here. There should be a, a little button there. The blue light will be on on the microphone there. Yes, it's on. All right. Well, time is yours. I am with the Cherokee Ridge Alpine Trail Association. We are a nonprofit 501c3 tax exempt hiking trail organization. We are all volunteer membership uh, with a governing uh, board of directors. There are no paid positions. We have built and maintained 17 miles of the most scenic, scenic hiking trails in the state, mostly on Alabama Power Company, property near Lake Martin. We own Smith Mountain, the highest elevation on Lake Martin, and the historic 90-foot fire lookout tower. It's open to the public and is part of the hiking experience there. All of our trails are in Tallapoosa County, just across the river, except Smith Mountain. We now have the opportunity to expand our trails into Elmore County and have something really special. In 2006, I was on a panel to come up with uh, an Elmore County comprehensive plan. A number of the rec recommendations were controversial, and I think Mr. Holt probably remembers that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> but one item was supported and approved by everyone. A riverside park below Martin Dam along historic gold mine road. Even though I led the effort to approve uh, the proposed item, I did not think it would ever happen, mainly because Alabama Power Company owned the land, and being so close to the dam and the restricted area, I didn't think they would ever approve or ever sell the land. The comprehensive plan was, sh was shelved and forgotten. A few, a few years ago, Forever Wild State Lands bought 2,500 acres along Lake Yates Lake below Martin Dam. Then they purchased another 2,500. After other purchases, Forever Wild State Land owns 5,500 acres, and they named it for the Forever Wild Gothard AWF Yates Lake Wildlife Management Area, which is a long name. Then, by chance, we discovered the old railroad bed right-of-way that the railroad that went to Bill Martin Dam. The Cherokee Bluffs Dam Railroad, that's the name of it, uh, when it was built, it was six miles in length, and it was built for one purpose, to haul materials to Bill Martin Dam. Built in 1923 by Alabama Power Company, it connected to the BNSC Railroad that went from Tallahassee to Eclectic. It was only in operation three years. When Martin Dam was completed in 1926, the railroad structures were dismantled, but the railroad bed remains uh, and in good condition after 91 years. 85% on Forever Wild lands, the other 15% on Alabama Power Company land, which was going to be sold to Forever Wild. In 2015, the Trail Association, Forever Wild, Alabama Power Company, and Elmore County Engineering met, uh, and after much discussion, Alabama Power Company agreed to sell 300 acres 
to Forever Wild State Lands. And Forever Wild has agreed to let us build hiking trail on the old railroad bed. Also, other great trails will be built on this and on this property and a small riverside park. This is a beautiful area, and when that large sign goes up that says Historic Cherokee Bluffs Dam Railroad Trail goes up on Highway 50, thousands of people will visit. And I don't have to tell you uh, what kind of an economic impact uh, that will have on Elmore County. Visitors coming from the west and the south will come through Wetumpka and Eclectic, or they will come from uh, through Tallahassee. Now I'm here to tell you why I'm here. The first 1,600 feet of Gold Mine Road off State Highway 50 is paved, but is in bad need of, re of resurfacing and striped. When the trail and park are open sometime this year, the road will not stand up to the added traffic. It's in pretty bad shape. Uh, I have given each of you a handout showing the location of the park and the hiking trails. And I will, uh, we are not asking for any funding or work on the proposed park, just the resurfacing and improving the 180 degree, 80 degree turning radius on Gold Mine Road. And of course, Old Gold Mine Road is already a county road. I will, be try, I will be happy to try to answer any questions that you might have, and I will be happy to give you a guided tour any time that you want to. And that is end of my presentation. Do you have any questions? We appreciate the information. Um, Mr. Byer, have you visited this site? Yes, sir, I have. In fact, he's got a, uh, a copy of the aerial kind of detailing out the uh, stretch of Gold Mine Road that Mr. Lanier is talking about uh, in more detail. Um, we have looked at that 1,600 feet and actually met with him and uh, many members of the, uh, the club about the conditions of the road. Um, our initial estimates on the drainage improvements and and minor parking and and uh, improvements to the to the turn that kind of goes down, parallels the uh, the, the river there, um, is about sixty thousand dollars to do all that work and do it to where it'll hold up to uh, um, normal traffic. Uh, the uh, the what Mr. Lanier says about the condition of the road. The condition of the road is aged down there um, and is in need of resurfacing. Um, the issue we have right now is there's no money in the current budget to address that and uh, uh, so that would be something to uh, consider in the future uh, in terms of allocating any kind of funds uh, for that but um, we, ha we have looked at it we have detailed it out those numbers are pretty uh, um, uh, very clear so that's a, that's a good estimate for us moving forward for consideration thank you any other comments or questions from any commissioners Mr. Lear, Lanier, I'd just like to tell you I appreciate what you and your organization has done in other areas, including here, to improve our county and open this up for recreation. And, Thank you. And sure to appreciate y'all your effort. And I guess this gentleman's here. With yeah, you, this uh, is Mr. Bill Garnett. He's uh, uh, on our board of directors sure. and uh, is a big asset to our trail association. He lives uh, up there close to Red Hill. Okay. And uh, he's... Uh, really been a, a great help for us. Well, we appreciate what both of y'all doing to improve our community. And I, I have a large map of this forever while in the, uh, the railroad bed if you want to look at it after the meeting. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, I, I, well, I don't have any question, uh, Jimmy, but I just want to commend you on what y'all have done in Tallapoosa County. I, I, I can't name the number of magazines that has featured that tower and the trail up there. And, and uh, I know it's been a tremendous asset to Tallapoosa County, and I commend you all on all the years, literally years of work that you put into that, and thank you for coming tonight. Well, thank you, Mac, and I, I just will tell you that that has been a boom, that tower for the city of Dadeville. Uh They estimated that the day after Thanksgiving, 500 people visited the tower, uh, so it, and they come right through Dadeville, and they come from everywhere, all over the southeast. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Jimmy.
All right, we'll move forward uh, with new business uh, to consider the maintenance agreement with IBM uh, for the IBM Storewise V3700. Ms. McDuffie, do you have any other details on this? I know we had uh, Sam review some of this information with regards to the necessity of this maintenance agreement. Do you have uh, anything to add yes, to that? Yes, Chairman, I just want to uh, mention that um, the uh, – the cost for is for a three-year period, and I would like to talk to the company about making that a yearly since we um, didn't budget the full amount this year. But I think a third of that uh, will be fine in this year's budget, and then we can we can budget for it in the next two years. But that's, that's what I would like to do instead of paying it all up front this year. Okay. I think we have some information. I know I got some information or was copied on some information from Sam's assessment of the, the need of this. Um, yes, it's on page 10. Uh, Sam sent me a, a nice email on, uh, you know, why we need it. It's, it's, uh, the hardware is one situation, but I think the uh, time uh, that would, we, we would lose uh, on the information and the servers and the operating systems, uh, if we went with this, uh, we could save uh, quite a few days getting up and running. Um, if Sam wanted to add anything to that, uh, he is the expert on this. I think we've we've got his information here. I think any commissioners have any questions or comments regarding this? Yeah, just one qu uh, question. Um, just so I understand it, I re did read all the information, and these servers are the ones that house data for multiple departments or agencies in the county. Okay. And with with this agreement, if they went down, we could be up and running very quickly. Without it, it could be possibly days while we were down, getting, that, trying to get them repaired. That is correct. Okay. I have and it would not be just the commission office. It would be all the, the highway, the email, uh, tag and title. Um, probate. Okay, thank so you. it would be pretty much the whole downtown courthouse would be um, out of out of service. Thank you. I have nothing else. All right, we'll move forward with personnel notifications. The notification of hire of Chase Armstrong appraiser to fill a vacant position effective five thirty seventeen. Notification of resignation of Ashley Walton part time corrections officer effective five seven seventeen. And we'll proceed now with the reports to the commission. We'll begin with Ms. McDuffie. And just uh, with a lot of the, the noise in here with the, the new air system, if you'd make sure everybody speaks in directly into the microphone so we can all hear you. Uh, yes, Chairman. I would just like to mention that I'm going to be out of the, out of the office the rest of the week at the um, Alabama County Administrators Association meeting. Uh, my deputy administrator and myself are going down for, for that. We go every May, um, and at our next county commission meeting, I'll have a report on what all we discussed. Thank you. Mr. Byer. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, just a couple items for you. Uh, this past Saturday was County Shred Day, and with the exception of a little hiccup with the start time, uh, I think they had about a 30-minute gap in terms of when they were supposed to start and when they actually did. There were about three people there when uh, uh, waiting on the truck to get started, but uh, everything else, we're waiting on the uh, volume from what was done at the shred day, but so far very positive comments. Haven't had any complaints. Uh, Kim may have gotten some, but usually she sends them straight to us, but uh, t so good, good feedback there, and then it's on your calendar here, but uh, just a reminder that countywide cleanup is this weekend as well. Um, last Tuesday, we uh, successfully closed the uh, two bridges on Ingram Road that are uh, were slated for replacement. Contractors working uh, feverishly out there getting that done. We have run into a small hiccup with one of the utilities and trying to get that worked out and get that squared away. Um, Mr. Chairman, that's uh, all I have in the way of report tonight. Do you all have any questions for me? No. Nope. Okay, we'll move forward with uh, Eric Jones from EMA. Yes, Chairman. Commissioners, I just wanted to report uh, tomorrow we'll be participating in the state's hurricane exercise. We've participated on a limited 
basis today, but we'll be operating as a just a drill for our office tomorrow. And then later in the month, uh, on May 31st, we'll actually have our full uh, tabletop exercise for all of the stakeholders of the county that want to participate to, to be able to participate in a, in a hurricane tabletop exercise. Um, last week, we, we hosted a special event security planning uh, course for public safety professionals. Uh, that class, uh, we ended up with a little over 20 people that participated in that two-day class, and it was an excellent training opportunity. And we've got one uh, coming up the first week of June. It's a disaster preparedness course for water and wastewater uh, utilities, so we're really looking forward to that training class. Uh, we've got a couple of other training classes that we're going to be doing. We've got an uh, amateur radio uh, technician class that will actually kick off tonight. It will be held at the EOC. Uh, and then also we've been working a lot on our grants that we've applied for and that we've been approved for, uh, but we've got uh, some follow-up activities on the grants for additional requirements with Federal Homeland Security on a couple of our Homeland Security grants, the one for the Central Elmore Water and Sewer and then also for the Santuck Volunteer Fire Department. And then we've got a couple of hazard mitigation grants that we're working on follow-up as well for some folks at FEMA Region 4. We've just got a few things that we've got to get them and some, uh, uh, like I say, finishing up the, the approval process, hopefully, of, of those mitigation grants as well. So that's all I've got to report on tonight. Do you all have any questions of me at this point? Thank you. All right, we'll proceed with our county attorney's report. Jeff Courtney. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I attended the continuing legal education program last weekend and I'm uh, putting together some comments for um, all those applicable. Um, we covered quite a bit of information in a little bit of time, everything from personnel to uh, public finance. So I am putting together some comments for uh, each department. Do you have any other questions? Nope. Thank you. All right, we'll proceed now with the reports from the commission. We'll begin with Commissioner Holt. Yes, sir. I can have one question, and I'll make my comments. Under the uh, personnel notifications, notification of hire of Chase Armstrong, appraiser, one to fill vacant position, I don't remember if the last meeting that we had a resignation. Is that a new position, or what's a, does anyone know the circumstances? It's my understanding that that was a um, it was a transfer. Um, Mr. Macon transferred one of his appraiser ones to a GIS tech, if I remember that correctly. Yeah, I don't okay. Know. I just wasn't sure if we were having a new employee yeah. or um, if that's. No, and the GIS tech um, was empty because he had an employee that he promoted. So he promoted one, brought one as an appraiser down to a GIS tech, and so his appraiser one position was empty. Okay. So, no, that is not a new position. It was a, a vacant position. Okay. It's not an additional position. No, it is okay. not. Okay. Thank no. you. Uh, as far as the report, I'd like to say I really appreciate the uh, cooperation that I've got from you, Richie, with the highway department and your people. They're doing an excellent job. Uh, everything that we've discussed, to my knowledge, has been taken care of, and I really appreciate their work. And also, Jimmy, I know how you feel about the Forever Wild and the trails, and really appreciate you being here because I know it, it means a lot to you. You're doing a lot of work on it, and you have for a number of years, right? <laughs> yeah, and I, I appreciate your effort. It means a lot to our county, and I appreciate each and every one of you being here tonight. Thank you. Commissioner Daughtry. I'd like to thank everyone for coming. I'd like to especially recognize our Edmond County Economic Development Authority, uh, Ms. Finley, her office, their board, uh, for all their diligent work in, uh, in assisting uh, Frontier Yarns. We attended that groundbreaking a few days ago for expansion there, $6 million expansion there. And on Wednesday, we'll be, we'll be uh, attending the 
uh, groundbreaking for the expansion of GKN in Tallahassee. If, am, am I correct in, in stating that that's a $35 million expansion? <laughs> okay, that will be coming later. I'm being optimistic. Okay. Okay. So GKN is expanding, adding more jobs, and, and adding to their business. And I want to commend our Economic Development Authority for not only promoting new, new business into the county, but assisting on a regular basis all the time with existing business in the county, which, which is a tremendous help to the entire county. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Daughtry and Commissioner Holt. And we'll move now to Commissioner Reeves. Mr. Mercer, and then Reeves. Sorry That's about fine. That. Either way you want to go is fine. <laughs> I, uh, thank you, Chairman. I wanted to make a, a few comments tonight uh, in my capacity of working with a, a CETA uh, on behalf of the Commission and, and talk about um, the, the Commission's role in uh, access to broadband and high speed internet in our county. We've got some areas that are not served in our area, uh, in our county. And, you know, it hadn't been that many years back when high speed internet was not totally necessary to conduct life as as we normally all would but that um that that's changed we have a lot of our businesses in order for them to operate uh, in an efficient manner and in order for um, our students to do their homework and in many cases they have to have access to high speed internet so the the need for that has changed uh, drastically really over the last few years in my opinion and and what i've seen is when uh, and many of you all have as well when we don't have access to many areas that uh, that limits those areas in Elmore County that can be developed for residential, uh, business, or commercial use. Um, so, you know, what is the county's involvement when it comes to high-speed internet and access, and and our, and our part in that? The commission does uh, enter into franchising agreements with uh, cable providers and. Um, and uh, that will in turn provide a high speed internet, but uh, we, we we do not enter into a uh, agreement that's exclusive. Uh, our agreement has nothing to do with what takes place in a municipality, um, and it also, um, like I say, no one no one provider has exclusive rights. Basically, the the franchising agreement that the county enters into gives that provider the authorization to uh, install their cable down our right-of-way and it basically says if you're going to do that then you've got to pay us a franchising fee of which you collect with a cut from the uh, the customer um, from the research that I've done and, and I'm going to ask Jeff a few questions here in, in a couple of minutes but the, the, from the research that I've done the um, the provisions that are in these, fran these these franchising agreements and there are more than one in the county um, there's very few provisions in there that the county can can set and regulate. Uh, in fact, every every um, franchising agreement we have now, previous commissions have have signed. We haven't. This commission hasn't done anything, but uh, related to that, as far as there being any uh, franchising agreements that have expired uh, since we uh, have taken office. Uh, but there's a few things uh, that I have have picked out in these franchising agreements that I know they directly affect uh, our citizens and that's the actual franchising fee itself and, and then it also mentions in there uh, about rates and, and the provision where it talks about rates it even even says the grantor which would be the county does not set these rates um, but Jeff can can you tell us a little bit about as far as in these agreements uh, what involvement the commission has as far as the regulatory authority uh, or or many of these provisions in the franchise agreement set by what I've seen mentioned multiple times called the Cable Act. Yes, sir. Um, the Cable Act, it's the first Cable Act was in 1984 followed by the Cable Act, I believe it was 1992, governs the a very large portion more than a very large portion of these franchise agreements for instance you mentioned the franchise fee it places a maximum fee of five percent of the gross so the fees that are charged are, are statutory in nature 
Um, you know, it, it's interesting. Some of that, not exactly on point, but some of that came up last weekend at the uh, at the CLE we went to, and you know, it was interesting listening to some of the attorneys that handle some of those things. And it is so uh, statute driven that there really isn't a lot of room for movement on a lot of on a lot of issues. Sure, uh, that's that's what kind of what I read, but mm -hmm. I, I wanted you to want to hear that from you. I was actually going to read the Cable Act, and it was 333 pages long. So I thought I would call that's you. That's impressive. And, Very yeah, impressive. I, yeah. Well, for me to have even found it, I thought it was. But um, <laughs> so with with that said, the um, the problem the problem with the lack of of access it hasn't just started. That's um, that's been uh, a problem in our county for a number of years. But you know. Uh, from the commission, this commissioner's and uh, perspective, and I know um, I'm sure the other commissioners feel the same way. You know what? What can the commission do in this situation to help improve the situation? Because we know it's all very important. Um, one thing we can do, we uh, we we've done some research. I have on behalf of the commission, and there are grants out there that we can take advantage of that we can in, and will in part pay for infrastructure to be installed to public buildings. That could possibly be a component uh, in getting uh, access to some rural areas. If we can get that backbone of infrastructure installed into some rural areas, um, we also want to make sure, and we have looked at this, to make sure that Elmore County is as business friendly as possible. Um, that applies to whether it be a cable provider or any industry that would like to operate in Elmore County or probably or either uh, locate to Elmore County. Um, but because of the, the um, lack of broadband really truly can adversely affect the current operation or future operations of a business uh, and also could offer, uh, adversely affect the quality of life of our, uh, our citizens, this is, um, this is really truly an economic development issue. So I and some other commissioners have been working with ACETA to uh, address this, and, and just like ACETA would engage or has engaged the services of a retail consultant to fill vacant uh, retail space throughout Elmore County, um, they are going to work to promote the opportunities we have here in Elmore County as it relates to uh, cable providers, uh, just as if this was a manufacturing facility or a retailer. Because uh, there are, uh, like I said, many areas in the county that do not have access. Um, the um, I've probably learned more about broadband in the last three or four months than I ever knew. Uh, but I, I want our citizens to know that we we understand there's a there's a need for it. We also understand clearly that uh, the importance of having broadband access is much more important now than it was just a very few years ago. So just know that we're aware of it. Uh, we're addressing the issue. We're working with the, with the Economic Development Authority, and we hope that. Uh, hope at one point we'll be able to be a positive part of uh, fixing that situation. Um, Chairman, with that said, I'd just like to uh, mention this at one of the meetings where the uh, town of Elmore uh, is working with Carp Deck uh, and, and looking at doing a drainage project, a planning uh, portion of the project right now in the uh, Elmore area. Uh, we are in need of some volunteers that could do some surveys, actually be door-to-door -door surveys. So if uh, anyone would, uh, is aware of a student that would need some community service hours or maybe even an organization that would like to be a part of these surveys, uh, they would ultimately help in uh, improving that part of the county and possibly obtaining grant dollars to drain some, some lower areas, uh, please let me know uh, and we will uh, surely get them plugged in. Chairman, that's all I have. All right. Thank you for your work, Commissioner Mercer. Uh, Commissioner Reeves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to welcome everybody here, and thank you for coming. And I, too, on the, I was looking at the notification on the high. I, I'm kind of want to pigtail off of uh, Mr. Holt. Uh, this is not a, a new a new position for. In the appraiser's office, or is this are you saying that he was promoted? And, and how, I, I like to, I know we're working on our personnel policy and management, but I'm trying to get it clear how do we 
notify people when we got openings in a job and you know I mean I know with the sheriff department they, they, they got a for the public just explain how that worked Mr. Gray. Um, on this one Mr. Macon um, I believe he advertised for three weeks in the paper as well as uh, internally at the courthouse and on um, the county website. Okay. So he did advertise in newspaper three areas for this position. All right, and then like with the sheriff department, he have an ongoing sense of a big turnover in um, the jails and dispatching. Some of his positions that are over, uh, he's mm -hmm. continuously taking applications. Okay, so he so if anybody wants a job with the sheriff department, or something, they can just go and apply or come here and apply at, at any time. At yes. any time. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. But uh, with, uh, but then when a vacant come in in, in the uh, in the appraisal office or in the revenue commission office, then we advertise a certain length of time because um, we don't have a continuous uh, advertising for that. No, because okay. there's very few vacancies in okay. his position in, right. in his office. Um, okay, I know we was working on some things, and I know there's a lot of things that we need to look at. Uh, the way we do, I was just want to make sure we all uh, going about uh, have a set policy and procedure for all the things when when they come up. Yeah, yeah. Right. His, uh, I know his dispatchers are. Um, he continuously accepts those applications, and okay. then in the policy manual, it says uh, that the county will accept um, employment applications or resumes when there's an, um, a vacancy. Okay, and then we'll notify when there's a vacancy. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh huh. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Reeves, and thank all the commissioners for their reports. Um, I commend each of these commissioners for their efforts. Uh, I know we uh, meet twice a month, but there is continual work going on uh, in between meetings. Uh, all the commissioners have uh, respective areas of focus, but they also uh, respect all the citizens of the county, uh, regardless of where they live, as their constituents. So uh, if, if a citizen in, in a particular area of the county contacts any of these commissioners, I know that they all respond as if that person was their neighbor. Uh, and I think that that's important for the citizens to know uh, we are uh, specifically uh, uh, assigned geographic regions uh, for um, election purposes because that allows for each region of the county to be represented, but the commissioners are all serving all the citizens of Elmore County, and I commend all of them for that. I would also encourage uh, the citizens and, and each of us to continue to monitor closely the legislative session that is coming to a close. There are a lot of issues that are still uh, that can have a dramatic impact on Elmore County. Uh, the prisons will be uh, in uh, conference or committee tomorrow. They will be discussing that in the House, um, and that will and or could and will have a tremendous impact on Elmore County, as well as uh, there's the potential that a trip 2 which would provide additional funding for roads and bridges in the local areas, uh, is uh, potentially... Uh, well, I'll just say it's on life support. It could be brought back up uh, in these uh, final days of the legislative session. And so those are things that we need to keep a close eye on. There's been a lot of turnover and change in state government. And uh, it's, it, it's in many cases, it's our responsibility as citizens to follow what's going on and to be uh, proactive rather than reactive. Uh, I Last thing I'll, I'll say is... Uh, here in the city of Wetumpka, which is part of my district, um, the city of Wetumpka is doing a, a lot of work to revitalize that downtown area. And on June the 29th at the Civic Center at 6 p.m., there will be a presentation uh, of many surveys and the results from these surveys that were done online in the last few weeks. They had over 800 people participate in online surveys, specifically about the downtown district what types of uh, businesses they were looking for, that type of thing. And so there'll be a big presentation there. So I'd encourage uh, all of our citizens to be active in, in that process and come and, and see that presentation on June the 29th. And that concludes my remarks. Well, Ms. Uh, Kimberly, if you'd go over the important calendar dates. 
Um, as the county engineer mentioned, this Saturday, May 13th, is the next countywide cleanup day at the locations listed from 9 to 1, and our next commission meeting will be on Monday, May 22nd, beginning at 5 o'clock with the business meeting following. All right. Thank you. We will reconvene in a few minutes. All right, welcome to the Elmore County Commission business meeting, Monday, May 8, 2017. Uh, we will begin with an invocation by Richie Byer, our county engineer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance from Commissioner Holt. Join me in prayer. Father, thank you for today, and thank you for the opportunity you've given us to uh, come together this evening to uh, do the business of the county, Lord. And I just pray for the, the uh, five commissioners and the uh, give them the wisdom and the... Uh, and the insight to be able to conduct business in the uh, manner that's uh, uh, pleasing to you and in the best interest of the citizens of the county, Lord. And I just thank you for the men and women who have uh, fought for this freedom and that are around the world continuously uh, defending that right for us, Lord. And, and Lord, I just pray and uh, thank you for, uh, as we come to this weekend with our mothers and just that everyone... Uh, 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 just realize the valuable gifts you've given us in our lives of our, our uh, maternal figures, Lord. Lord, I just uh, thank you for this and thank you for your son and uh, the greatest gift that you've given us in salvation. I pray all this in your son's precious name. Amen. 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 Let's all stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Thank you, Mr. Byer and Commissioner Holt. Uh, roll call, please, Ms. Kim. Commissioner Holt. Here. Commissioner Daughtry. Here. Chairman Suggs. Here. Commissioner Mercer. Here. Commissioner Reeves. Here. All right, proceeding with our regular business, is there a motion to approve the minutes of the April 27, 2017 commission meeting as presented during the work session? Motion. Second. Ms. Kim. Commissioner Holt. Yes. Commissioner Daughtry. Yes. Chairman Stubbs. Yes. Commissioner Mercer. Yes. Commissioner Reed. Yes. Is there a motion to approve the memorandum of warrants for the period of April 20, 2017 through May 3, 2017? I'll make a motion. Second. Ms. Kim. Commissioner Holt. Yes. Commissioner Daughtry. Yes. Chairman Stubb. Yes. Commissioner Mercer. Yes. Commissioner Reed. Yes. All right, proceeding with our new business, is there a motion to approve or deny the maintenance agreement with IBM for the IBM StoreWise V3700? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Kim. Commissioner Holt. Yes. Commissioner Daughtry. Yes. Chairman Stubb. Yes. Commissioner Mercer. Yes. Commissioner Reed. Yes. All right, proceeding with personnel notifications, notification of hire of Chase Armstrong, appraiser one, to fill vacant position, effective 5-30-2017. Notification of resignation of Ashley Walton, part-time corrections officer, effective 5 7 17. Uh, Ms. McDuffie, any additional reports to the commission? Uh, no, sir, Chairman, but I'll be glad to answer any questions. Mr. Byer? Mr. Jones? Mr. Courtney? No, sir. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I got a book to read before we adjourn. I think I'll just sit here and just I, It only got 360-some pages. Is that the agreement that you were talking about? Is this a yeah, filibuster right. here? <laughs> it's going to filibuster. <laughs> Did you get a second? Did you get a I'll make it if you get a second. <laughs> Mr. Reeves, second. <laughs> All right, Ms. Kim. Commissioner Holt? Yes. Commissioner Daughtry? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Reeves? Yes. Meeting adjourned.